Hello everyone and welcome to a surprise little side series. My name is Tuki and I'm going to be playing Urban Empires for you guys. Uh, now this will be running concurrently with my RimWorld series so I don't know how long I'll be able to keep this up as I have very limited time. Um, however, I will be doing this for you guys as long as I'm comfortable with it. And these will be up um, on the non Rimworld days. So Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Around about the, the usual time. Um, so what what is Urban Empires over here? It's a, a city ruler game that's essentially like a combination of a city building simulator and a political simulator like rolled into one. Uh, I believe it's made by Reborn Games and published by Calypso Media just the other day. You can find a link for it uh, on Steam in the description down below. Um, now uh, this goes without saying but before I even begin to get into this game there will be a lot of topics that I will be talking about as they come up. So disclaimer. The opinions that I voice in this series are not necessarily my actual real-life views on the subjects. Generally, it'll just be me spitballing about could-have-beens, what-ifs, and how-comes, as well as a little bit of bullshit philosophy surrounding the decisions. I'll also be reading out and discussing most of the things in this game, so it might be going a little slower, but I appreciate on having you guys here regardless. So. Let's get started um, with a new game. Yes, new campaign. Now, I have literally only played um, the tutorial last night, I think. Um, I have not done anything else. Like, I know there's like five eras or whatever, but I've played like literally the first little part of the first area. So, let's have a look at this. There are, I believe, four starting families. The Von Pilsens the St. Elias, the Kilganons, also known as the Klingons, and the Shuxis. The Shuiskis, I guess. That is majestic as all hell. Also, you know, just like hats off because this music is bumping. It's, it's really kicking off right now. Um, so let's have a look here. The Von Pilsens. The Von Pilsens are landed gentry. They are aristocrats with a strong military tradition and a hardline conservative stance. Their grand manor has steadfastly overlooked the same estate surrounded by their fields and forests since the early 14th century, despite the land belonging to like three different countries throughout the year. Uh, they are traditionalists. They believe in social hierarchy and the people's need for stability in a changing world. So these are your militant conservatives, I assume. Next up is the Sant Elias. Patrons of inventors and innovators. Well, there you go. They believe in solving problems through technology and technological innovation is rapid under their rule. They are known for their almost ravenous hunger for ideas and progress and for their fierce disdain of established traditions and conservatism. Notorious risk takers both in their personal and professional lives, they often seem aloof and alienated from the gritty reality and needs of the people. Sounds like me. Now, the Klingons. A strong working class family with a history in politics and the labor rights movement. They rose from grassroots community activists to major players on the city's political scene. Respected as heroes of the people, their dedication has made the family very popular with the proletariat. Their contributions to society are much appreciated, but this benevolence tends to lead to increased building prices. Alright, and then the Shuiskis. The Shuiskis are Russian emigres. I hope I said that correct. They pride themselves on being cultured, civilized patrons of the arts and theater. On the surface, unassuming and even indifferent to politics, none of the rival families view them as much of a threat, and their awareness of their social obligations has them in good standing with the people too. With dabbling in politics, politics, politics relatively new to them, they have no particular experience in any field. But sometimes disruptive forces can come from surprising sources. So this is like the dead center, they don't lean either way or the other. This is your leftist progressive working class progressive. Yeah, I said that already. These guys are more progressive, but they're in the more center, I think. 
I don't think they're left or right, but they are more towards the progressive side. If you look at the, the political roadmap or compass. Um, and then these guys, I believe, are conservative to the right. Um, I will definitely be the St. Elias because I'm all for that inventor and innovation and technology and knowledge and stuff. So this is definitely me. Um, what's this? Oh, this is... Can I... No, I can't. Oh, whoop. So I, I assume these are... Because there's five ages and there will be five different people. Let me just check if it's... Yeah. Okay, so it's not like you can pick between them. What do these guys look like? Oh! They look like farmers. These guys? Oh, bloody hell. What is this? Do you think... Fucking Napoleon wannabe? Anyway. So, I believe you begin in the Industrial Revolution Era 1 as... Giuseppe? Giuseppe St. Elias. Giuseppe is the eldest son of the Austrian Emperor's science advisor. While his father urged Giuseppe, Giuseppe? Giuseppe to follow in his footsteps, Giuseppe was more fascinated by architecture than natural scientists, sciences. Okay. He felt the old ornate buildings of the empire were outdated and envisioned a new architecture of functional spaces that focus on the needs of the people. Interesting. He's progressive. You believe in progress in your ideas. Minus one security. Okay, grammar school gets more brain power. High school has more brain power. And the vocational school has more brain power. I'm solitary. You value your privacy a lot more than other people's company. That's this is this is me with less hair. Elderly social life and prestige cost plus two. Oops. The Emperor's nominee just basically means that I can't be voted out. Which is fine. Okay, and these other people will then, I assume, be the people I'll be playing in later on. Alright, so this is the three locations. Cape Sorelia is another unique map. Uh, the harbors only, okay. These are slightly more challenging, I believe, so I'm just going to be playing in the... The Rimini of Swarelia, which is like a nice big plain open area. So just your conventional square map. Nothing fancy or weird like these ones. Okay, let's get started. And here we are. Welcome to your office, Giuseppe Sant Elias. Your father Giovanni was a scientific advisor to the court of the Austrian Empire, and the Emperor wanted him to lead the founding of new city. Kaiserschafen. 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 I think that means the Emperor's harbor? Yeah. Kaiser is harbor, and Hafen is Hava, or harbor, I believe. Unfortunately, he fell seriously ill, as you two were well known at court and had just graduated from the best university in Italy with your excellent grades, the Emperor asked you to take your father's place. Alright, let's do it. So, this is basically what our little area looks like. There's a border here. Uh, you can't quite see it, but it goes there. Then it comes around over here. All along those rocks. Stops there, and then it comes back over here, and then right along the road. This is our area to play with. So, that is good. Now, uh, you have to create your first district over here. So, everything over here is what you see. This is called, like, the wheel of life or whatever. This is the people's needs. This is your people's happiness. So all of this basically feeds into this thing. This is your budget. This is how much money your city has. This is how money, how, how money, how much money you personally have. This is how much science you're generating. This is your prestige, which can be spent basically on buying favors from the emperor or other cities or so on, I think. And this is the support of parties in your city. How much do parties support you? This is your standard residential, commercial, industry, in the RCI indicator. This is the city's population. This is the era I'm in. Now, I'll be playing this on just a single playthrough until I win or until I lose. I'll try my best not to lose. So, 
basically your win conditions is in this little logbook down here that you can see your victory conditions so the end of time i think um is as you finish the eras this goes through so either until you reach the end of era five or you have all of these classified objectives or you have a political victory an economic victory or a science victory um that's basically how you can end up winning the game which is very nice i as much as i enjoy city builders i enjoy a game that has an ending because you know i've <laughs> i have things to do man so uh enough talking let's get building uh we can create a district now you can see the border slightly clearer there it goes all the way around there um now i feel that this is like the area where you quote unquote come in here goes a train hello train um i'll be placing my city like smack dab over here so let's grab it like that and let's just uh whatever pull out a, a square and then we can basically like have it snap like that and increase this until the size suits us let's not have it so fucking pointy right there you go how's that look that look fine all right so now you have some options down here you can have the default grid size you see you can have it slightly more dense uh that annoys the hell out of me yes more like that mm, okay or you can have it nice and sparse like wide open spaces and i have no idea whether or not this actually has any impact on uh on your i've not played as i said a lot you can see the cost to construct it and then the cost that it'll cost you every month to maintain this that's a lot of money though that's that's like a lot of money so uh i'm going to comp confirm this now we can't change the the distribution of the zones just yet because i believe that is one of the researches i think i moused over it and i saw it um so this is going to be the generic setup of what this this is obviously industry this is going to be mixed areas where like we have them over here i don't know if you guys have it where you live where you have like the shops on the ground floor and then behind the shop you go up some stairs and then there's apartments and stuff on top of the buildings um this is what these mixed areas are they are mixed between both residential and commercial and then these are just plain residential so one of the things that we absolutely need to have is this city hall so we'll take this and we will place it somewhere this does not have a radius around it because it's a city-wide thing i can just place it wherever and and it'll feed the whole city basically there you go so this is also going to cost me an additional 25 on top of that previous cost and then a 5500 cost per month let's confirm that so here we have it this is a new dis district hmm. drinking lots of water because i'm going to be talking a lot right now we have the city hall as a service the infrastructure is just a null grid i believe there's like no grids and then there's a road grid that you see here obviously um then there's a city hall the split is 60 percent 10 percent and 30 percent our road capacity the cost to build it and then the running cost so i will propose this but we don't have a city hall yet so there is no city hall to vote on it so i'll just be using my personal funds right now which basically means that this thing is constructed instantaneously okay and i believe that is all that is necessary to get the city running so i'll press space and then we can have the time go oh and obviously uh, we can name our districts up up here somewhere let's modify this uh yeah let's just rename this district what am i gonna call it uh let me go to my little random generator over here okay then we type in okay i have a list of my 
with my subs. Then we just uh, add that guy. Okay. All right. So after clicking that, it seems that our first region will be called Legion Park. <laughs> Welcome to Legion Park. That's that's basically it. Confirm. Don't need much to change the name. All right, let's go on. So, um, meet the city council, which we actually have now. And then in the city council, you guys can see that we have our three parties. Basically, you have the physiocratic party, which is the leftist conservative, which is weird. Isn't liberal and left like the same thing? Eh, whatever. Progressive, whatever. That's the little political compass. A conservative liberal versus left and right. So there are the conservative left. Then you have uh, the National Swirlian Party, which is dead center. And then obviously you've got the Free Democratic, which is liberal to the right. Um, I'm very weird because I'm left, I think, in real life. I don't know. America's politics is so weird. I think I'm left, left-ish, center left. I don't know. But I'm very progressive, so I'm not sure if that's liberal or not. These are a lot of big words that, that confuse me. Like, we've got zero people living here, but I've got a full haul of people. You are all fucking ghosts. Obviously, we have to start our research, which is a big, big one. Um, to have, you can see basically there, this is, this unlocks newspapers, provide social life for surrounding citizens, shoe store, and then the spread selection, which is going to allow us to set the the spread of that residential commercial industrial etc of the zone um gas infrastructure is important because this will allow us to put down street lights but also give us the ability to put down the gas grid oh and we can also improve our road surfaces to to cobblestone uh safety authorities i don't care as much about right now this just basically gives me a clinic. Yeah. Thermodynamics gives us the railway station and a police station. Then we have sanitation down here, which comes from gas infestation. Now, these two are very important because this gives you running water through the water pipe. And this gives you gas, which is basically this age's form of electricity. Because if you think about it, everything that you could do back then with electricity, you could do with gas. Lights in your house? Oh, that's just a gas lantern. Stove? Ah, oh, that's just the gas stove. Heating? Ah, oh, gas heater, etc. and so forth. So many of the things that we use electricity for today back then was just, just gas. Gas that was pumped around in giant old pipes underground. Um. So yeah, I will. Th I think we'll we'll take the telegraph just because I want to be able to have that spread selection so that I can build more specialized districts as time goes on so let's select that as research and then let's go back ah so first month passed and we have a few people that are moving in over here right now we are losing a hell of a lot of money hopefully that'll get better as people move in to legion park which is a district of kaisershafen it's always the businesses that open first and then the people come. What's your problem? Your company is bankrupt. That's because there's no people here yet. They're moving in as fast as they can. Look at the little horses. Eh, people. I really, I do wonder sometimes, like, I've watched the Sherlock Holmes movies with uh, Robert Downey Jr. And, uh, man, I just imagine what it must have been like living in that time. If, if a genius such as that, I know it's not real, it's probably fictional. Um, if they were alive in times today, it's just, what type of things would they be able to do because they're not hobbled by the technology of their time? But I really think, like, getting into a horse-drawn carriage and driving around, like, dirt streets with 
wide open spaces like this. Because the city that I live in, um, the capital of Namibia, because we are surrounded by mountains in literally every direction except north. To the south we have mountains, east, west, northwest, northeast, southwest, every single direction around us. We just have mountains, 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 mountains. So, in between, it's like rolling hills even. The, the amount of space that we have to build over here is extremely limited. So, all our buildings are like cramped together. Like, if I stand up and look out of my window right now, I it's literally a small little space. Imagine, let's see if there's a house like that. Yeah. Imagine this little car's part, uh, area. Now, my where my house is here, the next house starts right there. There's literally enough space for a single car to fit through between the two houses because we've got a little bit of parking space in the back. But the houses are literally one after the other, like that. And uh, I really, really do get a little claustrophobic sometimes. So the idea of things being this open, like when I went to America, um, it shocked me, like just how open things were. It's almost like this that you see here. You see, like a there's no high walls because the crime is low. You can walk down the street and look between. There's just between two houses. There's just nothing, and in the middle of the houses, there's also just like this big open space. Like it, it amazes the hell out of me. Like. It's such a different world in comparison to what I'm used to and, and the times that I'm living in now. Industry demand is high. Yeah, I can see so. As soon as we have this telegraph um, figured out, though, we'll, we'll be able to... Ah, we're making money. That's good. Okay, so let's see here. Um, my social life is fine, but my people are lacking a little bit in security, a little bit in their average physical environment, in their health, in their personal growth, and in fun. This all together adds up to a overall happiness of minus one. As soon as we get a certain amount of money though, I'll be adding a basically a literary school to this district which will allow my people to have more average personal growth over there. Okay, as soon as this thing gets to half, if I remember correctly, there will be an event popping up here, which is what this game is, is mostly about. Might as well speed it up a little. Ah, there you go. So there's, we have this telegraph event that corresponds with the halfway of uh, whatever we're researching. So let's have a look at that. Sweet, sweet water. The city administration is formulating regulations on the telegraph use as the city is about to be connected to the connect continental telegraph network. What will I prioritize? Now, I am not entirely specifically sure what these do because there's no tooltips. Like, if you hold your mouse over them, it doesn't actually tell you. I'm thinking if we prioritize it for municipal use, like, back then, I might be talking a lot of shit here, but back then, these type of services and stuff were used for for military type of things. Like, I believe the first little um... What do you call Morse code? Uh, because these telegraphs use Morse code, I believe. The first little telegraphs that did, 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 were used, like in military. I think, I believe so. Military is like usually responsible for most of these inventions, like the internet. Even the internet was a military invention. Um, so yeah, the private use of the telegraph. Uh, this might come around later, but I think I'm going to select the municipal usage for now let's prioritize that so here we'll then see what the priority that we set will have um, a change in the monthly city fund expenses for the post office so a change in the monthly city fund expenses in the post office is increased by 15% however the bonus to security for the post office is increased by one so it's 15% more expensive, but it's more secure. I don't have a post office yet, I think, so I'm not sure that matters entirely. Okay, right now things are looking fine. What what would this literary literary school cost? Grammar school. 
That's 14 k month. Unfortunately, we don't quite have 14 k months just yet. So I'll just keep on speeding along until until my money looks a little better. Or until we have the ability to rearrange the districts a little bit better. Uh, but there's a lot of more people like settling in. We can basically click on here and then have the, the pop-ups come in. For example, most of these say that they have low employment, low employment, low employment. Which is fine. Again, as soon as this thing is re researched, we'll be able to change the layout to include slightly more industrial zones. Ah, I have received a dinner invitation. The chairman of the National Swarilian Party likes you, and he has invited you to have dinner with other important officials from the party. What is your reply? Now, um, if I accept the invitation, um, it's going to look bad. Because it means that I'm going, you know, I'm, I'm being buddy-buddy with these people, and I'm not necessarily sure if that's the public image that I want to be giving out. Is it? Or do I want to remain impartial? I'm going to politely decline, because I don't want to associate myself with any party just yet, I think. Okay? So, basically, this means that I have lost some goodwill with them, which is absolutely fine. Goodwill is basically used to sp spend uh, in manipulating the parties. You'll see that in a bit, as soon as this telegraph is done being researched. Looks pretty good. Right here next to the ocean. Oh, I would love to live like right there. Right here in this little house. With the two little... Damn, they're a rich family. Okay. So, the research is coming up pretty short. There you go. Breeds invention. No sooner is the electric telegraph devised than gutter poacher, the very material it requires, is found. Amazing, right? Like, as soon as we needed something to fuel our cars, suddenly there was oil everywhere. Especially in Iraq. Oh! Okay, so we got a church. I have no idea why the telegraph unlocks the church. Um, newspapers. A shoe store? Is that like something I can place? Um, and then the spread selection, which is important. So let's go to the progress cloud. I will be taking gas infrastructure next. Absolutely. This gives us the gas street lights, decorated gas street lights, which is, come on, a little bit too much. Gas lighting, uh, and then the gas infrastructure, Cobble Street Roads, which we don't won't need for a while. And chemicals, which is a different type of shop, I think. There you go. Good to go. So, at this point, I think it will be prudent to modify this district, and now we can actually modify these values. By picking this up to like 50% perhaps. So here you can see where this is good and where this is not so good. And where the parties fall in that specific area. So obviously the Free Democratic Party don't like us meddling around so much. So they're not as for it as any of the other people. So I am going to confirm this zoning. Confirm the services. I, I don't really have the money right now. As soon as we have enough cash flow, like at least over 14k, I'll place this down. I don't want to put myself into into debt this early. Okay, the district is fine, Legion Park. Mm, and I'm going to propose this district. Now you can see basically on this scale, where do people fall? Most of them approve this. You can spend some of your prestige, I believe, to make a quick and vote. I can use my, my personal funds to build this thing right now or to change this right now and then there's no vote necessary so i'm just going to use my personal funds quick quick and then you'll see because the regions changed now um these buildings were all demolished and these are what's left so hopefully this will allow a lot more businesses to boom and there you can see more people are making are making cash what's this low quality in the company i don't know not know what that means but yeah basically now i'm making enough money liberal sympathy what's this 
Uh, of all the parties in Kaisershafen, you sympathize the most with the Free Democratic Party, and they could be a powerful ally. However, cozying up to one party might cause problems with the other. Again, I would like to remain impartial. I really do want to remain impartial. This means the default neutral position to which goodwill will return over time for all the parties are increased by plus one. In other words, I think you start with three. Like, let's say you spend three goodwill to do something. After a certain amount of time, it returns to three. So now it'll return to four, which means overall I will have more goodwill to spend. That's good. I think I will be starting a another district pretty soon. Because we're basically making a little bit of money. Ah, our first newspaper. The Physiocratic Party wins the elections. A Free Democratic Party came second with 27% support. Glass cups in, ceramics out. State industry report. Families are switching from ceramic cups to glass, to the delight of glass factory investors. A new city is founded in Suralia. Emperor announces the establishment of a new city in Suralia. I believe that's us. Pretty nice. Okay, um, I'm going to check because there's been issues that this game can't save, but it seems that they've they fixed that. Save game. Save has been successful. Okay, um, I'm going to leave this episode here. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, let me know down below what you guys think, as usual. Uh, it's a little bit of an experimental thing that I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to be recording like a lot of these in a row, so I won't be able to implement your suggestions or your fixes right, in, right away. But I really do hope that the volume is okay, at least. Either way, thank you guys for watching. If you like this episode, please cl click that like button, show your support, so I'll keep on posting more. Uh, if you like my content in general, check out my other series that I have on the channel and consider subscribing. Again, feel free to comment down below. I'll read and respond. And uh, as usual, thanks for watching, and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.